New York, London, Tokyo. It's a city that's earned its place amongst that exclusive group. It's a name that rings out as a cultural trend-setting capital and as a city at the forefront of metropolitan society. Tokyo is our modern world, an ever-evolving jungle of salarymen and on-demand services. A city which seamlessly harmonizes cutting-edge innovation with its ancient roots. These neon-lit streets of chaos and confusion can swallow you whole, leaving in its wake a never-ending thirst that will forever remain to be quenched, as you will never be able to find a city like Tokyo again. In a city that holds a secret down each and every avenue, it's a tough job narrowing down the best sites, but the ones featured on this list are considered unmissable by most. So in that case, here are the 10 best highlights to see in Tokyo. Enjoy! If you've ever watched any movie, documentary or anime series set in this iconic capital, then you for sure have seen this place. The Shibuya Crossing is the epitome of the city's perfect harmony of fastidious organization and total fucking chaos. The four-way intersection finds itself smack bang in the center of one of Tokyo's busiest and most hectic shopping districts of Shibuya. Shibuya Roll Call! Where the dazzling billboards and advertisements glisten brighter than the eyes of the city's tantalizing cafe girls. The real star of the show is the crossroads itself, where upon red lights an impatient tsunami of bodies unleash upon the streets, consuming it like a horde of ravenous insects. As quickly as it started, it all vanishes away and the cycle repeats in the never-ending rat race of metropolitan life. You can lose yourself in a city slicking wave of bodies along the crossroads itself, or better yet, experience the madness in all its glory with a bird's eye view. For a detailed guide on the best places to see it from, check out my website at www.travelingwashman.com for detailed guides on Tokyo, Japan and other countries I've been lucky enough to travel to. She must plug out the way, let's get on with the video, shall we? Also known as Asakusa Canon Temple, this eye-catching mastery of Japanese-ness is Sensoji the oldest temple in all of Tokyo, and the very best of them all. Its crimson structures are some of the most beautiful sights across the city, providing welcome respite from the absolute madness that the rest of Tokyo is. Its surrounding courtyards are often full of worshippers that come from far and wide. The temple itself holds a golden image of Kanon, the Buddhist god of mercy, though it's hidden away from the public gazes. Legend tells of its discovery in the nearby Sumidegawa River by two fishermen both of whom now have a shrine dedicated to their honour. Right before the temple is yet another worthy highlight in of itself. Nakamisa Market provides chaotic hustle and bustle of consecutive market stalls decorated, red banners stocked with all the tourist trinkets you'd expect to find. Varieties of hachimaki, mock samurai swords, kimonos and all the usual tourist shite. The true treasure stands at the end of the market itself as a large red gate known as Kaminari Mon or the Thunder Gate. The name comes from the equally badass named Fujin, or the god of wind, and Rajin, the god of thunder, though they'll barely be noticed, as the true eye catcher is the enormous red lantern that hangs from its centre. The temple finds itself in the heart of the Asakusa district, and yes, you better get used to it, you're going to hear a lot of names of districts that you're not going to remember, but they're going to be pretty important, so make a note of it and let's move along, shall we? Speaking of which, now this next district is the most manic of all. Think of it as the Mac Daddy of tech, gaming, anime, and all adult fetishes known to man. Akihabara is the center of Japan's otaku culture for the most diehard fans of different entertainment industries. These include some of Japan's biggest, like anime and manga, and extend to some more seedy pleasures like hentai, brothels, and a concerning number of vending machines that sell used underwear. The most notable images to come from here are the numerous megalithic department stores that always seem to feature on documentaries, usually with some sped up footage and a doo -doo 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 kind of soundtrack to it. Much like you might be able to find on a certain Welshman's channel. Hintry hint 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 so be sure you check that after this one. Fucking smooth. One thing you come to learn pretty fast in Tokyo is that the city has learned to maximize what little space it has. From capsule hotels resembling mortuaries to hole-in-the-wall eateries, Tokyo has learned to make the absolute most out of this claustrophobic metropolis. That even applies to getting yourself absolutely shit-faced. Scattered across the city's busiest business-driven districts are a living, breathing slice 
of post-war Japan. These narrow series of alleyways contain a staggering number of tiny single-roomed bars, some only big enough to seat five at a time, if not less, and that's even if you're sitting. These peculiar little establishments were once home to frequently visited brothels that served the overworked, underappreciated Japanese salaryman. Though sadly today, their stresses can only be released by more legal means, unless you know where to go. Some of the more notable areas like the Golden Guy in Shinjuku and Nonbei Yokocho in Shibuya today feature an endless number of closely packed miniature bars and restaurants, which usually offer a selection of small appetizers to complement your beverages rather than one big elaborate meal. Tokyo works hard, but it plays even harder. Despite the typically reserved nature of Japanese people, many citizens aren't afraid to let their eccentric side shine. The district of Harajuku is one of the best places to see this flamboyant nature on full display, especially on Sundays. A day of rest it may be for the Christian world, but here in Harajuku it's a day which brings sight that would give a medieval peasant an epileptic fit. These lively streets are the epicenter of Tokyo's youth culture, fashion revolutions and influential trends. Areas like Takashita Street, would you please grow the fuck up? Are the holy grail for the hardcore lovers of all things weird. On Sundays, groups of buskers, dancers, protesters, exhibitionists, goths, twats, and every offbeat oddball gathers along the streets. The real showstopper can be found in the main square of Yoyogi Park, where you find a one of a kind spectacle. Every Sunday, dedicated rockabilly dancers gather to dance to their heart's content into some classic 50s rock. Each crew comes with their own personalized jackets, fine denim jeans, and a toxic level of hair gel, and have absolutely no shame in boogieing the day away in front of a regular crowd of stunned onlookers. There are plenty of images synonymous with Japan. Sushi, sumo wrestlers, and pixelated genitals barely scratch the surface of cultural wonder, though nothing inspires awe amongst the man bun wearers and alpha male grifters than the ancient samurai. Here in Tokyo, lays an unassuming little temple hidden away at the end of a quiet residential street. Little would you know that it holds one of the most badass tales you've ever heard of. The story begins in 18th century feudal Japan with a man called Asano Naganori who is brutally insulted by a court official. In response, Asano attacked the official which led to Asano being ordered to commit seppuku, a form of ritual suicide. Asano's loyal group of samurai had now become ronin as they found themselves without a master. Under the leadership of Oishi Kuranasuke, they vowed to avenge their lord's death, and revenge is best served cold. With a sight of soy sauce, they raided the official's home, slay him, and brought his head back to their master's grave. The ronin surrendered and were ordered to commit seppuku, just like Asano, which they happily accepted maintaining their honor in the process. Now, the 47 Ronin lay here beside their master at Senkaguchi Temple. Fucking cool! If the Japanese love for sushi wasn't cool enough, they're undoubtedly a nation of fish lovers. In fact, their love for the aquatic creatures is so strong that they're willing to murder entire pods of dolphins to protect their catch. Seriously, watch Seaspiracy on Netflix, that shit's fucking insane! Anyway, in a world where everyone demands quality, purchasing the right catch is a must. And in Tokyo, there's only one logical place to go. The first stop for the freshest of sea life on the Japanese shore, Toyosu Fish Market. This state-of-the-art market is on the man-made island of Toyosu in Tokyo Bay. Unsurprisingly, you'll find an enormous variety of fresh produce sold at the market, mostly centered around the extraordinary sea life that arrives on a daily basis. Crabs, squid, salmon, sea cucumbers, eels, unagi, and perhaps some dodgy deals with a couple hunks of whale if you know the right guy. However, it's another fishy friend that brings the big bucks, tuna. Here you'll be able to witness typical Tokyo-esque madness as freshly caught tuna is auctioned off to the highest bidders. In stark contrast, standing next to the freak and chic of Harajuku is the city's most adorned Shinto shrine. Shinto being the most significant indigenous religion in Japan. Meiji Jingu marks an important turning point in Japanese history, with it marking the ascension of Emperor Meiji. And more importantly, the end of feudal Japan, or the time when samurai and shoguns ruled the land. This revolutionary moment brought Japan into the modern world and finally opened its borders to international influences. The shrine is placed at the center of a dense forest away from the mayhem of the surrounding streets. 
At the beginning of the pilgrimage is an enormous wooden Tory gate, the most notable icon of all, marking the entrance down through the groves along the gravel walkway towards the main courtyard. Fucking pristine. At the entrance of the temple, you'll come across a familiar sight at every Shinto shrine in the country, a Temizuya. This is where visitors must purify themselves by pouring the water on their hands before entering the shrine. For the many, many sins you plan to bring into the serenity of this temple, you bet guess to wash in your grubby bitch. Nothing gets the heart pumping like gambling your family's life savings on that sure bet. Sadly, however, Japan's nanny state doesn't allow their citizens to do such a thing. However, that hasn't stopped a certain group of illicit members of Japanese society from finding a clever loophole. A group with quite a tattoo-sporting, pinky-cutting, fucking awesome-looking reputation. The Yakuza. The word is that they generally are in control of these kind of establishments, and they found a clever way to get around the gambling system. Pachinko is a mechanical game that combines elements of pinball and regular old benefit consuming slot machines. The punter pays to play, and in return they have a chance to win some of the balls, which they could then take off the premises to certain establishments that will happily buy the balls off you. Absolute genius move! If you don't wish to gamble your life away or dabble in organised crime, there's also plenty of family friendly entertainment on offer. To use another completely valid stereotype, Japanese people absolutely love video games. The love is so deep that they are dedicated video game arcades across every single city in Japan. It's not that unusual to see a 13 year old boy sat next to a suit wearing 45 year old businessman, and even a 65 year old grandma trying her luck at a crane machine. Speaking of Emperor Meiji from before, his familial dynasty continues to exist to this day. Standing on the former site of the city's Edo period castle, the Imperial Palace represents the remnants of Japan's imperial history and remains the official residence of Japan's imperial family. But don't get too excited, you peasant scum. You are not permitted to enter other than as part of a guided tour. And you can book one right now by following the link down below in the description. So I can get a cut of the commission and I can pretend this is a glowing recommendation. Please like and subscribe.